All right, we're back from a quick break. Coming up next is Tinui with Super Alice 4. Tin, how are you doing? I'm good. How about you, Manix? Great, and uh, whenever you're ready, good luck. Thank you. All right, I'm um, going to have a little bit of a cutscene here after this. I'm going to make sure to um, set you guys up for the timer as best as I can. Um, but let's hop right into it. So hi everybody, I'm Tin, this is Super Valus 4. You might have seen this uh, game a um, couple of years back run by um, that one nice guy. But I th you saw the any percent run, we are trying the uh, normal. It's the same category though, it's um, the JP version. I'll explain a bit why we use the JP one. Gonna go in 3, 2, 1, go. Alright. As you also see, we are having a bit of a different character here. I think Nice Guy was playing as the oh my, the, the red hair girl. Um, she's called Lina. Lina is our um, hero for this game. And basically, the good the good thing about this game is if you encounter enemies the same every time, uh, you don't really get any differences. So it's pretty much all about memorizing the game. Enemies move the same way every every time. There is no differences. There is no RNG to the stages at all. It's pretty execution heavy. No huge glitches or skip in the classic sense. Um, but when it comes to the bosses, bosses um, carry heavy RNG. So it's really like kind of balanced in a way. You have no RNG really for the stages themselves, but the bosses you can lose up to 10, 12 seconds, even more if you get bad RNG. Let's see what we get here. That's looking pretty good. So this guy is, he's looking a bit weak for um, a death fight if you're used to some Castlevania games. Uh, he can be quite challenging for this game. You just uh, hit him a couple of times with the sub weapon and the sword and the boss is gone. That's pretty much how it goes, in the best case. Um, yeah, the sub weapon we uh, were using for this boss is the strongest one in the game. You're gonna see that one uh, a couple of times. Um, there's a couple of other sub weapons we use, but pretty much this one we just had in the previous screen is uh, the strongest one. So this stage, pretty chill music, pretty easy going. Um, but after this stage, we're gonna make use of a glitch that is called a Headless. And we can only activate that glitch while we crouch into a screen transition. So as you've seen before, you can't really do that when you switch screens like that. You can only do it after bosses, that's the thing. So you, um, you fight your boss, the, the, the next one we do it, it's not really optimal for this, um, this stage. That's why we only do it after the next boss. Um, but we activate the glitch. Once it is activated, you really don't want to crouch again because it's, uh, it's going to disable the whole glitch again. So we're going to try and keep that headless glitch on for as long as we can. Uh, but basically you have to do that after each boss again. Because if you finish the stage, it just kind of resets in a way. So you uh, you fight the boss, you crouch, you set up the headless glitch after each boss. Um, and it's gonna help a lot, because what it actually does, it it extends Lina's hitbox. So kind of like the part of her upper body is not in the hitbox anymore. So what it does is it's kind of easy to um, dodge, um, let's say, projectiles. Somebody's shooting fireballs at you. They will usually hit you. Uh, but won't for when the headless glitch is activated because you can't really the game can't really see um, Lina's head as part of the hitbox anymore. Um, what it also does is there's a couple of stages. The next one coming up, um, a stage called Crystal Pillar, uh, where you can actually extend the height of your jumps too. So when you would usually bonk into the ceiling, once you have the headless glitch activated, you're kind of like you reach into the ceiling, which makes your jump a lot lot more effective. And it's quite easier to get through the stages. You see, this stage has some, yeah, some tight jumps. That was one of them. And overall, really great music. So just in case we have any any donations to read or anything, Manix, go ahead. If not, I'm just gonna continue. We do not currently have any donations, but uh, if you guys want to tilt the scales for the next run, Monster Hunter World's incentive of dropping a boulder on Dodo Gamma, 
you have $145 to beat. If you want to stealth away from that. Um, and a reminder that we are raising funds for the Canadian Cancer Society. Back to you, Tim. Right, so what we're gonna do here, let's see if we get it, is a uh, yeah, somewhat newfound um, boost. Yeah, got it. Um, that one was found when uh, Shinku, who had the world record just before Joe took it back on the last rain, uh, he found out about this new creature skip uh, or creature boost you can actually do. The old way we used to do it is you go all the way to um, the end of the screen and then try to set it up and use a boomerang to get on top. Um, the creature boost is a bit more tight. But there's also a frame perfect version of that one. We didn't quite get the perfect one, but still really nice time, time safe overall. So this is one of the bosses where you can actually see how heavy RNG can affect the speedrun for this. Because um, you really want to try and make her get out of the water at least twice. She's coming out now, but that's super late. Um, so yeah, you, you really want her to come out of the water twice at least so you can get more hits in with the sword. You saw the sub weapon, it has to go all the way into the water and reach her to even do damage. And sometimes she can just swim left, right the entire time and you don't really get um, as much damage in as you want to. So this boss, sometimes I lost up to 12, 20 seconds. It's, it, it can really add up for this game. So this stage, um, you're gonna see another trick we gonna use quite a lot in the late game, um, and that's called um, armor bomb. So what it does, pretty much, um, we have two armors here on top. You can see that for the sub weapons. Uh, so what it does, pretty much, is you use one sub weapon, so you wear an armor, and every time you wear an armor already, and you try to activate the second one. Uh, what it does, it, it, it creates a huge uh, armor bomb, which causes massive damage. We use it a bit on uh, several screens, but uh, especially use it for the final boss. Because the final boss has a giant HP bar. You really have to um, hit him a lot to even make his uh, HP bar take damage at all. So we use a couple of armor bombs to get the HP down and then you just attack him the normal way. So this screen pretty much you um, try to make use of the armor, get past all these guys. There's a little bit of a frame rule for one of these jumps where sometimes it happens that you get hit twice. You really want to try and get here with uh, your armor still on, that's, uh, that's the preferred way. So sometimes you have one hit left, sometimes you get this frame rule, you get hit twice, and then you really have to um, see how the rest of the screen turns out. This guy, when he's doing uh, sharp dives at me like this, that can't really do much. Um, you can actually try and see it. If the screen lags more, it's when you get a preferred spawn from him. See, it lags a bit more, you can react and uh, try get double hits in. So the more double hits you get in on this guy, um, the quicker the boss killers, of course. You can get quite lucky and get three hits in sometimes, but the double hit is what we are really trying to do for this fight. So Act, act 5, Crystal Pillar, or Crystal Pillar, um, that's one of the hardest stages. And you can see for this one why um, the headless glitch is uh, so good to have. Because I can really make good use of the, the hitbox extension. I can jump and reach into the ceiling where I would usually just bump my head and couldn't really do most of these jumps that you see here. And the bad thing for this stage is also it's on a global timer. So if you do everything correctly, uh, you should be able to get to the boss. For this boss you see the, um, the armor bomb usage for the first time. We want to get to the boss and if we do everything correctly, what happens is we do one armor bomb and we only have to attack the boss once after this. So you can really like uh, check and see if you if you did it all right. Let's see for this one, oops, little bad jump. Yeah, that's not good. Um, let me use this one. Okay, so normally you want to try and get through, that's the global timer thing for this one, because uh, you actually can't pass if 
the one uh, stalactite is there or one of the pillars is too high, you can't really get here in time. Which means we have to deal two, um, two more hits to the boss after this. So Armor Bomb's gonna take away his uh, main weapon. And the good thing is, and it's, it's, it's kind of weird too if you play this game casually, you see this boss and the title when the boss uh, appears, it actually says one of the two things the boss is. Uh, but if you don't take a look and you just think, oh, the, the green thing is your boss, you gotta fight this thing. Uh, while it's actually the fireball behind you have to attack. So it's a little bit trolly. So this is uh, last regular stage. Red Moon, um, and in the JP version you can clearly see this is Fetuses, uh, and the final boss is also throwing some of them at us. US version, it's censored of course, um, but the reason we play JP is there's huge differences between the, the two versions. Um, for the speedrun, we definitely prefer the JP version. For the US version, um, what's making that a lot harder, and most people who played this game when they were kids, um, basically played the US version and for the US version you um, you only deal half the damage but you take double damage makes it a lot lot harder than uh, the JP version we see here and uh, talking RNG for the stages the previous screen was one of the very few exceptions where you actually uh, have to deal with RNG these fireballs you saw on the, the top side of the last screen you can't, you can't really um, see if they spawn high or low, so you, you actually have to activate your armor and hope for the best, pretty much. But that's one of the very few um, moments where RNG really matters in this game. For the rest of this game, it's pretty much the bosses carrying all the RNG. So we didn't really get um, a good Red Moon this time, means we had to clear these enemies with the... Uh, basic sub weapon you have in this game if you don't have any other sub weapon equipped and this boss is one of the hardest in the speedrun it's heavy rng you want to try and um, let him leave the screen and jump up at a certain time so you can set up for a quicker kill where well, usually if he stays on screen the longer he stays on screen the better it is um, and you want to try and get double hits in every time he flies in. It's kind of easy mode here for this one. Um, but like I said, this is uh, the last regular stage. And after the stage we have, yeah, classic boss rush. And the bosses in this game, it's not a lot of bosses. They're not actually super um, interesting bosses anyway. So they just take three out of the bosses that you get. This is the one from stage two, and for the boss fight, for the for the boss rush, it's it's really all about RNG. Because here you can't use the sub weapon; you actually want to use it on the next boss, since you only get the stronger sub weapon here once. Uh, you saw we had it for um, the boss in stage two, because we got two at the time. Now we only have one. We want to keep it for this boss, which means the boss that we just um, killed. It's all about RNG. You, ha you only have the sword to hit him. It depends if he's doing short hops, long hops, whatever he decides to do. This boss, same thing as in stage 4. You want to see if the screen lags more, you can get more hits in. That's what we want, just like here. You want to try and get two hits in at best. Um, try and kill him the earliest possible. The next boss is going to be the boss we fought in uh, Red Moon. Just so it's a bit harder to do this time. Last time we just had the same movement all the time pretty much. When he comes into the screen it's just um, the same pace pretty much. Uh, for this revisit of the next boss, he, he, um, the, every time he flies in he gets uh, a lot faster. So you can't rely on your usual timing, you have to react a lot faster to these spawns. Which makes that boss quite a pain uh, if you play or if you, if you try to PB, it can really mess a lot. So you got good RNG now for starting out here. Sometimes you hit him once and he immediately gets off screen, that's the worst thing to happen. But you, you see he gets quicker every time he comes in, it makes it a lot harder to get these double hits in. 
gets off again, we try to jump. Try to get two hits in. This is also where, where the, the headless glitch helps a lot. Because um, normally when you jump up and try and hit him, uh, you would get hit by him flying at you. But because the game doesn't register um, Lina's body to be part of the hitbox or the upper body, it doesn't register the upper body, you can just be into his hitbox with your head, but it doesn't count as a hit. Alright, final cutscene we get for the game and then it's a uh, fight versus Galvia. So the story of this game basically is um, Galvia captured the goddess Yoko. Yoko is responsible to restore peace in Vacanti. That's the first world we got to see um, earlier in the run. Um, he captured the goddess. He wants to get hands on a magic ring that might grant him the ultimate power to rule over the world. So it's on Lina to fight him and um, get him back into the magic prison he was in. It was sealed, but he somehow broke free and now we have to fight this guy again. It's a big jerk for the speedrun, it's like your, your final RNG boss, um, if he decides to do ice attacks or um, there's a missile attack he can do, it just takes forever to, uh, yeah this one for example. But it, it's, it's party RNG, um, you Sometimes he's just doing it, but it also kind of depends on your distance towards him. Uh, when he's further away, he's more likely to do um, favorable attacks. This one he's usually doing more often if you're close to him, but you've got to be somewhat close to hit him, so it's... Yeah, you can't, you can't really dodge it. But you want to try and like get away a tiny bit, make him do these jumps instead, and then try to close up on him again. So this is okay attacks. Um, like I said in the US version, you wouldn't see the fetuses, you would just have um, him spamming blue balls at you. That's pretty much it. One more time. But for a PB run, that's really already too much. Um, time is when the screen turns black. But yeah, that's that's huge RNG factors. Pretty much all the bosses in this game. Um, for the stages, you just try and memorize. If you move the same way through the stages every time, enemies move the same way too. So you actually you just have to learn the round. Everything happens the same way all the time. For the bosses, though, it's it's heavy RNG. So you can get to this boss. I saw a lot of uh, World Rocket runs get to this boss on a really good pace, and then if he just decides to stand there and do ice attacks. You, you can't really do much, you just have to take it, so... Yeah, but it's a um, pretty nice game, it's not too long, it's uh, execution heavy, there's not a lot of skipping stages or anything, so... Really nice speed game for anyone who want to try this out at some point. And that's it already, that's Super Valus 4 for you guys. I hope you enjoy it a little bit. Um, I'm glad I was able to be part of this again, it's always a nice event to watch and take part in. I hope you enjoy it. And good luck to the rest of the runners. Thank you very much for that run, Tinui. I can't even run properly in that video game, so that was a nice <laughs> choice. Yeah. Um, yeah, up next we got Monster Hunter World. Um, so where can we find you, Tinui? I know other than Twitch, I'm going to shut you out in the chat. Yeah, I also have Twitter. For Twitter, it's Tinui LP, because I used to do German Let's Plays. But it's basically uh, Twitter and Twitch. So yeah, that's... That's it. That's it for me. Hope you guys enjoyed. And we certainly have indeed enjoyed it. So uh, we're going to take a quick break and listen to some music. We'll be back with some Monster Hunter World. Don't go anywhere. <laughs> <laughs> 